Welcome to another episode of Mike Out. Early 2016, I made a pilot episode for a podcast that was going to cover ways to literally take modern office work outdoors. My aim was to push the idea that uh, office work does not need to be in cubicle landscapes between four walls every workday of the week. The technology today allows many of us office workers to uh, work just about anywhere there is wireless coverage. Performance of laptops have uh, dramatically increased and slow mobile data services uh, are a thing of the past. A modern job does not necessarily need to be locked up indoors and we don't need to reach the point uh, that we do a Christmas candles to escape from society into the wild. Society does not have to be disassociated from the natural world, in my opinion. Technology is allowing us to remove that bias. On a larger scale, imagine if uh, businesses encouraged employees to work outdoors more. It would mean a less crowded and more efficiently used office space since everyone wasn't there at the same time. However, you would want them to be well equipped for the task. And then I don't mean necessarily tech-wise, but uh, having the skills to work outdoors. Survival, bushcraft and outdoor instructors uh, could be hired to train people for the new challenge. Instead of training for a recreational spare time hobby or tourist activity without immediate measurable value for a commercial business, they would uh, train workers that instantly would uh, create value for their business if they had some outdoor skills to get the job done, of course. Interrogative sounds crazy or too wild, all pun intended. What got me convinced was how we do office work in the army. It's literally an office outdoors. So I know it's possible, even in bad weather, but why not start working outdoors when the sun is shining? We don't even do that today. Unfortunately, I only finished the podcast introduction. Actual work kept me very busy and I never continued with the series. I did, however, continue working outdoors many times and uh, want to share some of that experience and also promote that people take the office into the wild by continuing the effort here on YouTube. The rest of this episode will uh, replay the podcast from 2016. Please subscribe and comment what you think about this idea and hope you enjoy. Welcome to Mike Out, a podcast about backyard adventures and motivation to get out into the wild while making a living as an office worker. My name is Michael Blomgren, I'm uh, 36 years old, born, raised and live in Gothenburg, Sweden. Wilderness survival used to be a huge interest for several years when I was younger. Back when YouTube only allowed 10 minute video clips and the only survival shows on TV were Ray Mears, World of Survival and Les Stroud's Stranded, I started making my own amateur documentaries. Wilderness survival was more than just a hobby. It was a lifestyle, and I even dreamt of somehow making a living out of it. Then, of course, the real world snapped me out of it, and uh, living on the edge of poverty to do what you love was not as romantic as it used to be. In between a 9-to-5 job, other outdoor interests took over, like uh, hiking, fly fishing, rock and ice climbing, 
and mountain biking. But nothing that really got deep under my skin, and I eventually slipped away from being a weekend warrior bushman. However, I think my survival escapades lay the foundation for who I am today. Experiencing one week starvation alone, fighting the cold with just the clothes on your person, bad firewood and moments of tough psychological trials does put its mark on you. And I don't mean the nerve damaging frostbite I've sustained, I mean psychologically, it changed me. Doing similar adventures for years is bound to turn you into a different kind of creature than what a society with one of the best living standards in the world usually produce. The psychological experience of voluntary suffering through survival exercises has come in handy in all parts of my life since. If hard can ever become easy, it does feel like survival exercises is one of the best ways to nurture you into that mindset. Lately I've returned to the outdoors and the whole minimalistic backpacking experience. I feel I'm back into a comfortable element again, far from the concrete jungle most of us call home, if even for a day or two. It's understandable to think that hiking out, rappling off cliffs, drinking pine needle tea as the only sustenance, and sleeping in a bivy bag under a spruce is anything but comfortable. But there's something special about the whole experience that makes it all worth it. Being close to nature. Today I work in IT operations. It's an office job which basically involves troubleshooting from behind a keyboard. Essentially, I could work just about anywhere, and that is one key element to this podcast. My idea is to be able to perform a high-tech office job in the wild. It's uh, definitely a challenge that serves a practical purpose. My job involves having one week on-call duty a few weeks apart. That means I have to answer the operations phone outside office hours, resolve alarms and attend to issues around the clock. I'm a hopelessly pragmatic and practical person. If it's not useful or doesn't serve more of a purpose than just being fun, I'm going to have a hard time motivating myself to do it. Therefore, in order to do what I want, that is uh, get out into nature more, I've had to come up with a scheme that makes it more motivating beyond the obvious physical exercise and meditational value of being in nature. One such motivating factor is to be able to be on duty in the wild. 
something which uh, will involve all my interests from uh, radio operation to practical outdoor issues with technology, from packing so that things don't break to battery capacity issues and simply moving from point to point with some kind of challenge in between. This podcast is uh, my attempt to share how I reason to achieve a greater urge to get outside for both business and pleasure, but also to present a different kind of view on the subject of preparedness or prepping, if you will, and oppose some of the outright wrong teachings given in a couple of survival slash bushcraft podcasts I've uh, listened to. Since I'm schooled in the Swedish way of wilderness survival, The ideas will of course be heavily biased towards that and uh, mainly focus on the nature in my backyard. On the subject of prepping, most teachings boil down to distrust of virtually everything and everyone other than your family. Government, military, law enforcement and uh, even the immediate community are given the same respect as looters, robbers and vicious private militias. Of course, there are parts of the world where they are the same bunch, but uh, that's fortunately an exception in the free world. Some skepticism is always healthy, but as research shows, the human being is a herd animal. We thrive by helping each other. Think about it. The reason aircraft cabin crew instruct you to put on your oxygen mask on yourself first before helping anyone else is not because the majority of humans are selfish bastards. It's because the majority of humans are not. Otherwise giving such instructions would be meaningless. The reason they instruct us to put on the mask on ourselves first is that if we follow pure instinct we would help our fellow passengers first. By the time we're done helping others we could have passed out before we've uh, got our own mask on. It's uh, human nature to help others before we help ourselves and the airliners sure think it's true. I know there's always exceptions to a rule, but this is what I believe would be the behavior of most of us in the event of a shit hits the fan scenario. As there is too much focus on the antisocial behavior of helping yourself and watching other people perish, prepping as a phenomenon does not seem to be prepped for this. All pun intended. I'm not going to argue that the opposite may very well be true in your community. But uh, my opinion is that latent issues and disagreements in the normal ordered situation is enhanced in a disaster. The issues have always been there, they just become worse when people are tried hard. Perhaps the most courageous kind of prepping is to bridge these issues, make contact, discuss how we can be stronger together and perhaps even make an oath that in the event of disaster we Two segregated communities shall help each other because we are stronger together than we are apart. I'm going to approach prepping from the perspective of community empowerment and helping your neighbor instead of sitting it out alone. I believe that in great shared strain people will come together and support each other. Lawrence Gonzalez, the author of the excellent book Deep Survival, summarizes his book in 12 rules of survival. Rule number six is uh, simply be a rescuer, not a victim. Gonzalez writes that there is always someone else. They, the survivors, are helping more than themselves, even if that someone is not present. The book mentions some examples, but the core of the matter is that self-centered behavior is typical of victims, while empathy is that of rescuers and rescuers are much more likely to survive than victims. Maybe just because they are also doers, but uh, the two usually come hand in hand.
My intention with this podcast is to attempt to combine three areas, psychology, physiology, and technology. The stuff that would bind it all together could uh, perhaps be described as micro-adventures. I'm a big fan of Alistair Humphreys, the originator of the term and concept called micro-adventure. For Scandinavians, this is basically just what we historically have called an outdoor weekend. But I like the more precise definition by Alistair of keeping things simple and exploring your backyard. Of course, that kind of exploration becomes uh, almost unnecessary to define when it's as accessible as it is to most Swedes, with the right of public access to forested areas, not only reserves but including privately owned forests. This also makes my internet coverage problem a whole lot easier since uh, I don't need to travel very far from the nearest base station. So Sweden is a very good location for this experiment. Psychology. I am by no means educated in uh, this area, but I believe I have enough personal experience to talk about and enough expertise to explain a few scientific studies. Physiology. Although I have uh, no official education here either, nutrition used to be a very time-consuming interest a couple of years ago. I have also basically experimented with just about every kind of diet out there. I even ate nothing but meat for a whole year. Just like William Stefansson and uh, his party did during his expeditions among the Inuit. No vegetables or any other carbohydrate, just meat and seasoning, nothing else. And no, I did not develop scurvy, which is a really interesting observation by anyone who have attempted to eat this way, and as far as I know, there's no research available to explain this phenomenon either. The physiological area will naturally cover a lot about nutrition, but also the standard physical considerations during any outdoor endeavor. Technology. As a soon-to-be radio operator in the home guard of the Swedish Armed Forces, it's going to be expected of me to be proficient at managing electronics in the field. I'm also an amateur radio operator with a pretty bad QTH. That is, uh, my home location is uh, not a very good one to mount aerials. So uh, making contacts from the forest using long wire antennas is a whole lot more fun. But the main focus in the technology area will be on everyday work. We are all connected today and perform more and more work from behind a keyboard. So my plan is to attempt to bring technology and nature together in a productive way. Playing uh, video games or watching Netflix from under a spruce tree may sound ridiculous, but maybe working and having a conference call with your colleagues in the office from under that spruce sounds even more ridiculous. Yet, think about it. When a military staff establishes a camp, everything from TV screens, laptops, printers and communication equipment to coffee brewers are brought along. The gear may be specialized for this purpose. Okay, perhaps not the coffee brewer. And certainly it does not fit in your rucksack. But nevertheless, it's office work in nature. So I'm proposing that we try the very same in a civilian setting instead. Of course, there are location and strategical motivational factors for soldiers to set up camp quickly in certain areas. The reason to do it in a civilian setting is uh, not as straightforward. But the reasoning and justification could simply be because it's fun, or to spend more time in nature, to train for it from a preparedness perspective if you have to leave home or be on the move. And of course, for health reasons, dragging all that equipment out into the wild does require substantially more physical effort than commuting to the office for uh, most people. And of course, psychological motivation. Then we have uh, combined technology in a beautiful way, in my opinion, with the uh, physiological and psychological aspects of being a quote-unquote natural human being. That's it for the pilot episode of Mike Out. I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about in the next episode other than simply storytelling about my last outdoor weekend, or micro-adventure, rather. In the true spirit of the community-based preparedness I'm proposing, I'm hoping that you listeners provide some feedback, hints and questions, 
and I'll attempt to respond to your feedback and questions in the coming episodes. Please email me at podcast at mikeout.se. That's uh, Papa, Oscar, Delta, Charlie, Alpha, Sierra, Tango at Mike, India, Kilo, Echo, Oscar, Uniform, Tango dot Sierra, Echo. Music in this episode by Evan King. Thank you for listening. This is Mike out. <laughs>